In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve a particularly interesting problem using the template design pattern in Java. Now, one of the things I like about an Android development class like this one is we can go back and look at some things that maybe didn't make a whole lot of sense in intro programming. We can see how we can apply them to solve a problem creatively in Android. So it gives us a chance to kind of go back and reflect on some tools that we have but we might not know how to use them. So our problem statement is this. <clears throat> we have a GPS a plant screen that has a menu for search by color, but also for GPS a plant. If I go to the search by color screen, I have the GPS a plant menu option, but I still have search by color. The trick is how do we remove the menu option for the current screen? But the footnote is, we don't know every screen that our application might have, so we also need to make this future-proof. And the way to make it future-proof is we need to not use an if test. We need to not use a conditional logic like that. We need to think, think of a better way to accomplish what we want to accomplish. So we'll take a look at the template design pattern and how that can be used to accomplish what we want. First of all, a reminder on polymorphism because this is going to come into play with the template design pattern. Variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call. Object type tells you what happens when you call those methods. Take a look at the line at the bottom of the slide and see if you can identify which is the variable type and which is the object type. I plant DAO plant DAO equals new plant DAO stub. The variable type is I plant DAO which is an interface we made earlier. An interface is a collection of methods, which is all a variable type needs to be, because the variable type is only saying, these are the methods you're allowed to call. The object type is a concrete class that implements that interface. The concrete class is called plant DAO stub. So variable type is what we use to declare a variable. Object type typically involves some kind of constructor call or something of that nature. Okay, so here's a question for you then, and this really goes to the heart of the template design pattern. How can a superclass get a hook into a subclass or a series of subclasses? What if those superclasses, or sorry, what if those subclasses have not been written yet? Let's think about how this works in our application. So if I go to our application, we have a superclass called Plant Places Activity. Right now, the subclasses for that are GPS a plant, and color capture activity. Now if you look at plant places activity it has no intimate knowledge of what all of its subclasses are. So if it needs to ask the subclass to do something, how can it ask a subclass to do something? What we'll need to do this is an abstract class and an abstract method. We also need to know what our current menu ID is but we'll pick that up when we walk through the example. So an abstract class, what do we know about that? An abstract class is like a normal class except you cannot instantiate an object of an abstract class. In other words, plant DAO stub here because we're calling a constructor, that cannot be abstract. As soon as we add the abstract keyword, we can't call the constructor on it. Now, we can subclass an ab abstract class and we can call a constructor on those subclasses, that's fine. We just can't, sub we just can't instantiate the abstract class itself. Secondly, we need an abstract method. An abstract method in an abstract class is kind of like a hybrid between a traditional class and an interface. An abstract method is simply a method signature that we define in the abstract class. And then we anticipate that the subclasses will provide a definition for that abstract method. So these are the ingredients that we're going to need. We'll see that in just a moment. This all falls into this template method design pattern that I keep talking about. And here's a description of that template method design pattern. We define the skeleton of an algorithm in an operation, deferring some steps to client subclasses. Base class declares an algorithm placeholders. Derive classes implement those placeholders. So it might be a little mouthful. Maybe it's easier if we look at it with an example. So let's take a look. I'm going to go back to Plant Places Mobile. And in this onCreateOptions menu method, we do have some interesting uh, opportunities that are available to us. Take a look at this. I can say menu.removeItem, and then I give it an int value. 
Okay, now what's that int value? Let me go ahead and just leave this in. We'll leave it with a value of zero at the moment. But what is that int value? Well, if I go to my menu GPS of plant, it's a value that corresponds with this ID that we see here. ID GPS of plant, ID capture color. If I go to design view, uh, it came up at the very top here. If I click on one of these guys, uh, it's the ID that we see up here. The only trick is naturally it's a unique ID, so it's going to be different for each menu item. So we have to know which menu item we want to remove. Okay, gosh, well that's gonna depend on the screen that we're on. And see, here we get into this circular logic where it's hard to figure out which one we want to remove, okay? Well, why don't we just ask the screen which one we want to remo remove? For that, what I need to do is I need to make a, me a method called get current menu ID, just like so. Uh, we'll invoke that. We'll assign it to an int. Int will say current menu ID equals get current menu ID. Then we'll take that current menu ID and we will pass it into this remove item method. So current menu ID, just like so. Okay, the only trick is what about this method get current menu ID? We need to make that. Now I'm going to hold Alt and press Enter and look very carefully. Do you see there's create method and there's also create abstract method. Look at create abstract method get current menu ID. I click on that and look at what it does. It creates an abstract method which looks just like the type of method we would expect to see in an interface where we just have a method signature followed by a semicolon. In other words, there's no body here of this method. So that's why I say an abstract class is kind of a hybrid of an interface and a typical class. But here's what's really nice. Do you notice that we're able to call this method get current menu ID even though the method is not defined? So we're able to invoke that method from our abstract class. Now let me save and let me extend project again. And I'm going to click on GPS a plant and suddenly, whoa, what's going on here? Notice we have a red line. And we know whenever we have a red line, we have to stop and we have to implement or we have to fix the red line. So what I can do is Alt Enter and take a look. There's now an option called Implement Methods. Let me click on this. Remember, we're in our subclass. Let me click on this and let's see what happens. Okay, Get Current Menu ID. And there we go. Get current menu ID. So let me show you in Argo what we just did. We declared an abstract method in the superclass here. Now abstract method means there's no definition in the superclass. It's up to the subclasses to provide a definition for that method. As soon as I navigated to GPS a plant, it gave me a compile error because I had defined a new abstract method in the superclass. In GPS a plant as a subclass, has to provide an implementation for that method. What do you think will happen when I go to color capture activity? Well, we see similar behavior. I navigate back, I go to color capture activity and take a look, exact same thing, we get a red line, Alt Enter, implement methods, and get current menu ID, and there we go. Okay, now you see they're both returning zero, but we can be a bit smarter about this. For GPS a plant, get current menu ID, I'll return R dot ID, Dot, and then what? Well, what was the name of our menu? I think it was called GPS a plant, just like so. That's going to return a unique identifier as an int that identifies the GPS a plant menu option. If I go to color capture activity, what are we going to return here? R dot ID dot color capture or capture color. I think that was our whoops capture color. Whoop, just a moment. R dot ID dot capture color. That was the unique identifier for the capture color menu and then I save. So what we see here is we have implemented some decision logic by saying in the abstract class we want to make a decision, GPS a plant is returning an ID that's specific to GPS a plant. Color capture is returning an ID that is specific to color capture. Okay, this gets really interesting when we debug. So let me snap a breakpoint in color capture. Let me also snap a breakpoint in GPS a plant and I will also snap a breakpoint and on create options menu up in plant places activity. So uh, we're getting pretty close to what we need. Just a couple more things to go and then we'll demo. We probably want a default option if the screen doesn't currently have a menu. So what I'll do is I'll just do a quick check here and say if uh, current menu ID is not equal to zero. 
So we'll say zero is kind of like a default value where if you don't have a menu ID or for whatever reason you want to leave your menu option up on the menu, just return zero. At this point, I think we're in good shape. So let me go ahead and deploy and let's see what happens. Now I'm in the debugger, pay special attention up here to the classes that I'm in. This is just the application starting up. Also under run, I want to reemphasize step over means execute this line and go to the next. Step into means if I'm on a method call, go into that method call. Step out means if I'm in a method call, go back to the method who called me. And then resume program means just keep running as is. So I'm going to go ahead and choose F8 to inflate the menu. Now here's where things get really interesting. Int current menu ID equals get current menu ID. Watch very carefully across the top because the tab that's white represents the current class that I'm in. So I'm going to choose F7 and watch where we go. Holy smokes, we went to GPS a plant and take a look, what's it returning? It's returning the unique identifier for GPS a plant, which is some long number. We don't care what the number is. We know it's just a unique identifier specifically for the GPS a plant method. So I choose F8 and look what happens when this method returns. It goes right back to plant places activity. It says that's not a zero value. Remove the item and then go ahead and, cre and create the options menu. At this point, I'll press F9 to tell the program to continue. And we go back to our emulator and take a look. And again, I know it's a little hard to see white on yellow, but notice that search by color is up in the menu bar, not GPS a plant, only search by color. Let's click on search by color and see what happens next. So search by color, we're right back here to the super class again for plant places activity, just as we were a few moments ago. I choose F8. Okay, now get current menu ID, I choose F7. Now watch what happens here. Ah, color capture activity lights up. So I mouse over color capture activity. We have some unique identifier different than the other one for GPS a plant, but a unique identifier nonetheless. I choose F8, watch what happens across the top again. F8 takes me back to plant places activity. I step over this. We know the current menu ID is not equal to zero. It's going to remove that menu ID and then create our options menu. F9 tells it to continue. Now we see the color capture screen, guess what? Only GPS a plant shows up. So in this video, what we've seen is that we can use the template method design pattern by starting with an abstract class and we can give it an abstract method, get current menu ID. Now let's remember from source making, base class declares algorithm placeholders, derived classes implement the placeholders. So this is essentially an algorithm placeholder. We're invoking it right here in our super class and we're defining it right here. But the subclasses or derived classes in the words of sourcemaking.com, the derived classes determine what that method actually does. Does it return the unique identifier for GPS a plant or the unique identifier for capture color? The nice thing is if I add a future screen and I have it extend from plant places activity, it's going to force me to implement this method in that future screen. So we're future proof. If I were to right click, I won't go through the whole thing right now, but if I were to right click add a new activity and have it extend from plant places activity, it would make me put this method in and decide what this method does. That's why we can't create an object from an abstract class because an abstract class by definition means some of the logic lives in the subclasses. One other important thing I'll point out is notice we did this entire bit of conditional logic without using an if test up here. We did a simple null, we did a simple uh, validation if test right here, but that, that's okay. It's okay to do an if test if we're just checking for something being valid. If I add more screens to this application, I don't need to alter an if test. And that's the really important part of being flexible with design patterns. So template method design pattern, you've learned a new one that you can add to your arsenal. I love design patterns. I hope you will take a liking to them as well. So this is one you can add to your tool chest. This is one that uses abstract classes and certainly we'll have some opportunities to talk about some others as the semester continues. Thank you.